Hey everyone, it's Joseph Angelo Tadero, and yes, I am a real person. But I'm here today to review my new 2016 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar from a designer's perspective. I'd say the first thing worth talking about with any new computer is the performance of the computer overall. Is it faster? Will I get my work done faster? My MacBook Pro here is a 15 inch, so it's a quad core, and I upgraded the processor to the 2.9. I also upgraded to the four gigabyte graphics card because I'm thinking the more performance, the better, right? M might as well max this son of a bitch out. And I expected this computer to be ripping, ripping fast. Naturally, the first thing I did was a stress test exporting video to compare it to a MacBook Pro that's a few years old. The result was that they were virtually identical. So all of those things that you're reading about where people say the new MacBook Pro is not faster, in certain situations, that is completely true. It is not much faster most of the time, and some of the time, it's a little bit slower. I don't even know how that happened. I don't know how you make a new computer and make it not noticeably faster. It's been, it's been like two years since they updated the MacBook Pro. You would expect it to be significantly faster. It's not. Just know that if you have a MacBook Pro that's a couple years old and you would like to upgrade because you want a much faster computer, Apple didn't make it. One thing I will say performance wise is that the flash storage is actually quite a bit faster. So it feels zippy even though it doesn't necessarily have significantly more processing power. The next big thing up for debate is the display. It now displays more vivid greens and more vivid reds and it is noticeably brighter. I'm actually a pretty big fan of that because sometimes with my older MacBook Pro, I'd be sitting in a place that's brightly lit and I would go to turn the brightness up and it would already be up all the way. The brightness of the display on a previous generation MacBook Pro is around the same as the new MacBook Pro with it turned down two full bars. So just imagine if you could hit the brightness key two more times. That's how bright the new MacBook Pro is. It's hard to tell when you're in the Apple store, but when you do get the computer home and turn the brightness up all the way, your eyes will bleed out of your face. The thing with the color gamut on the new display is that only you can see it. If you're designing for other people, whether it's print or web, by the time it gets to the other end, they can't see it anymore. So even if you're sending something to an art director for approval and you gave something a little bit more color saturation, for example, they're not gonna see it and the conversation might go a little something like this. Hey Joseph, I just sent you over a new version where the reds really pop. I don't, uh, I don't see the difference. Are you on a 2016 MacBook Pro? No, I'm on my phone. Oh, your phone. Well, oh. I mean, it's really colorful. Yeah, it looks, the, looks it, exactly the same as it did before. Oh, well, I'm, yeah, I, I'm not paying for this. So everything will look beautiful for you, but just not necessarily for everyone else. The next big thing is the battery life, and it's been kind of a debacle with this computer because it's pretty bad. Apple claims 10 hours of battery life out of this computer, and if you wanna get 10 hours, then I'll tell you the trick. You have to close the lid, put it to sleep, and not touch it. During actual use of the computer, you will get five or less most likely, and during my stress test yesterday, I had the battery go from 100 to 23% in an hour and 33 minutes. That puts this thing on schedule to be dead as a doornail within two hours. So if you're moving around a lot and you can't plug your computer in very often, that is going to impact your productivity. Before we continue, a very odd side note, I was having some pretty horrendous battery life while running Safari until I wanted to watch an episode of Westworld and was forced to install Adobe Flash. Ironically, since installing Adobe Flash, my battery life seems to have doubled when browsing the web. Why is that? The only reason I can think of is because the high performance graphics card is less likely to kick in with flash content than with other content. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense to me, but I will tell you this, if the high performance graphics card kicks on, your battery life is going into the ground. The last major thing and the elephant in the room is the touch bar. Is the touch bar a gimmick? Is the touch bar useless? It is supported by Photoshop and it is supported by Sketch. Now we can hop onto the computer and do a little live demo of how the touch bar works with Photoshop and with Sketch, but I do have a separate video coming demonstrating all of the Sketch functionality really, really thoroughly, and I'll put a link to that on the screen now and at the end of the video and in the description if the video's up. All right, so here we are in Photoshop, and in Photoshop, the touch bar functionality is essentially broken apart into three separate categories that you can toggle between. This is the first of the three. We've got the ability to place a new image, we've got opacity, and then the last button uh, allows us to jump into the visual history, which allows us to scroll backwards by just swiping our fingers, and we actually get immediate instant 
uh, visual feedback on the screen. This button here, the first button, allows us to switch from layer properties to the other two modes. Uh, brushes being the next one, which has the color picker. You guys are probably wondering where that's been, but right now I've got my brush tool selected. Let me actually go over to another document here, a blank document, so that we can play around a little bit. But we've got size, and these things work the way you'd expect. You just get a slider for each one, and you can play with that slider until you get what you're going for. And the one that might not work the way you expect is the color. So naturally, the first thing that I tried to do in Photoshop was to play with the color as I was brushing. And it does not work that way with the normal brush tool. So I was super bummed about that. But if you let go and switch the color, it will paint with the color that you switch to, just not if you're holding it down as you're sliding. So that really, really bummed me out. But then I switched over to the mixer brush tool. And with the mixer brush tool, oddly enough, the mixer brush tool does allow you to change the color as you drag, which is super sweet. So you can do some really cool stuff with the mixer brush tool that you can't do with your regular brush tool. And I'm glad that I figured that out because I haven't heard anyone mention this before and it's definitely worth mentioning. And I did not lift my finger. I was clicking and dragging the whole time and at the same time was changing the color on the touch bar. And we'll switch into the last mode, which is called favorites. Favorites is customizable. The whole purpose of this is that you put the things here that you actually care about. And uh, that's a matter of going to, uh, I believe it's view. Let's see, yeah, view. And then at the bottom we have customize touch bar, which brings us into a mode where you can click and drag different buttons onto the touch bar. Now let's jump over to Sketch, and I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be doing a more comprehensive and detailed explanation of how the touch bar works in Sketch for LearnSketch.com, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, but let's just do a brief overview of how Sketch differs from Photoshop and uh, what might be missing here. So when you have nothing selected in Sketch, you get a toolbar for creating new layers. So we've got the Artboard button, we've got the Rectangle tool, the Oval tool, the Ellipse tool. Uh, the vector tool, the text tool, and the ability to place an image, followed by a plus and minus sign, which it may not look like it, but that is actually to zoom in and out. So now if I get a layer selected, like this rectangle layer, uh, with this rectangle layer selected, you can see a couple of properties here. The color swatch can be tapped on for the border or for the fill. And the first thing it shows are the document colors that I have saved in this document. When you have text selected, text has very, very basic controls. We have the text color. Uh, then we have our text alignment, so you can quickly change the text alignment, and then you can move the layer up or down. When you do a multiple selection, you instead get your alignment and distribution options. So as you can see, the touch bar functionality is kind of limited, but that's because the touch bar is brand new and the software developers haven't really had time to figure out what the best way is to leverage the new hardware. Is it a gimmick? No. Is it underutilized? Totally underutilized. But it's gonna get better as the software developers figure out how to take advantage of the touch bar and as we provide feedback of how we want it to work. So the bottom line verdict on the new MacBook Pro for a designer, if you have a really old MacBook Pro, I say go for it. But just know that mine was $3,500 and if you don't wanna spend $3,500 because you think your computer is just fine the way it is, then you're probably right. Quick update for you guys. While editing this video, I had some intense graphics card issues. I had the screen go black and the computer completely froze and needed to be restarted. I had the screen turn pink and the computer froze and it had to be restarted. And I had some issues with some orange and with Photoshop dropping off the bottom of the screen. All kinds of crazy, crazy stuff. And upon further investigation, learned that this is happening to other people as well. The issue is that Apple has come out and blamed third-party software for the issue, even though in the screenshots that you've just seen, only one of them was caused by Photoshop. The rest were caused by Apple Final Cut Pro. So I'm downgrading my rating to a do not buy until these issues get worked out.